Hi there, Smart Drivers. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you tonight about the role of the driving examiner and what he or she does making the decision about how you pass your road test or on the unlikely event that you might not be successful, what their role is as well. So stick around. We'll be right back with that information. Hi there, Smart Drivers. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you tonight about the driving examiner and the role of the driving examiner in passing your license, getting your license. Now, this week I put up a video on COVID-19 and whether states and provinces are beginning to open up and whether they're beginning to administer road tests. However, it's, it's a dog's breakfast. <laughs> Some of the states are open and testing, doing administering driver's license tests. Others are only administering driver's license tests for commercial drivers, CDL drivers, bus and truck drivers. They're not doing any for passenger vehicles. Uh, some states are still closed after almost three, three months and a couple of weeks. Uh, here in ICBC, they're still closed. The state of New York in the U.S. Uh, only testing for CDL licenses. Uh, in Texas, the private driving schools can administer the road test. So some people in there in Texas are having success with that. Uh, most of the other states that I know of are closed. Uh, and no doubt uh, the riots that are going on in the states protesting, you know, inequity in, you know, racial injustice are having an effect on what's going on with the DMVs and those types of things. So if you have any information about your DMV, please send it to me in either a comment or in a text, uh, not in a text, in an email rather. And I'll be sure to begin to collate that information because some people are trying to get their tests and wondering what's going on and don't have any clear information. Uh, and I know that it's very different uh, in the western states and provinces uh, as opposed to what's going on in the eastern states and provinces. So Katie's here. Hello, Katie. Eric is here. Uh, 85 degrees, chance of sprinkles. Yeah, it's, it's a bit rainy here as well where I am. Anderson, I think I passed on southbound to Rochester. Uh, Rochester yesterday. <laughs> okay, not sure what that means, Anderson. You think you passed. Uh, you, you're not sure yet. Okay, so let us know what's going on in your state or provinces in terms of the testing and whether they are testing. And as well, know that the test centers, regardless of what they decide they're going to do, are going to take care of the backlog first. If your license is about to expire, they will extend your license as well. So know that. Don't know that it's not going to expire and you're not going to have a license, even if you have a learner's or whatnot. So DC is here as well, and Tim is uh, watching from Winnipeg. And if you are just tuning in, let us know where you're tuning in from, what class of license you're going for, and we'll help you with all of that. <laughs> oh, Anderson, you think you passed you passed me on uh, um, going to Rochester yet the other day? I don't know. I wasn't in New York State. <laughs> Still here in British Columbia, uh, on the west coast of Canada. So yeah, that's where I am. So yeah, all of that's really great. Okay, uh, Destiny's here, and uh, yeah, so we'll get over to the presentation. I'll do the presentation. A few more people will show up, and again, if you have any information about the DMV and what's going on in your state or province, please let us know in the comments, and that will help all kinds of people out who are trying to get their license and get moving forward. <laughs> Anderson, you speak English really well, so yeah, no, great. Uh, first name, last name, Oregon. So we got somebody here from Oregon. I had a question about Idaho. I, the person in Idaho was trying to figure out what was going there, uh, going on there in terms of the DMV. It doesn't sound like very many uh, DMVs, Department of Motor Vehicle places that do the testing in the states are open at this juncture. So, oh, Rochester, Minnesota. My mistake, Anderson. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, every time I think of Rochester, I think of New York State as opposed to uh, Minnesota, but there's one in Minnesota there as well. Amen. Uh, I live in Vancouver, BC. ICBC, they did not open yet. They're still not open. And, you know, the, the, the I did the video and I'll show you what that is. It's the um, COVID-19 and your road test. That's the name of the video that I did on Wednesday. And, uh, you know, these test centers are tens of thousands of road tests behind. And I don't know how they're going to deal with this backlog. Uh, license in Cleveland, excellent. Uh, Madison, what's going on in New York? The, the current news that I have about the state of New York is that they're only testing for CDL licenses. They're not testing for passenger vehicles yet at this point. So that's what's going on in New York's state, Madison. Okay, 
And without further ado, we'll get over to the presentation here and get through that and get that done. So driving examiners, this is what we're talking about today. Uh, their job and your job in order to pass your driver's test and earn your driver's license. So this is what we're talking about. And this is the person who's going to sit in the vehicle with you. In most places in the world, when you sit for your road test uh, with the driving examiner, it's just gonna be you and the driving examiner in the vehicle. I know there are some places in Europe where they allow the driving instructor to go with you, but for the most part here in North America, it's just gonna be you and the driving examiner in the vehicle. For those of you who may be new to Smart Drive Test, my name's Rick August. Uh, I've been a driving instructor professional driving instructor for almost 30 years now, which kind of scares me. No, not 30 years, two decades. So 20 years, and my math is not very good. That's why I'm an, uh, an arts major. Uh, I drove truck in the 1990s. I became a licensed commercial driving instructor in 1997. Most of my experience as a driving instructor has been with commercial vehicles. Uh, however, I've done some passenger vehicles as well, actually a lot of passenger vehicle stuff. And I worked with drivers with disabilities returning to driving so people with brain injuries missing a limb learning how to drive with hand controls and whatnot uh i finished i, I um earned my doctorate in legal history in 2006 and with a specialty in policing as it relates to traffic and while i was going to university in at the university of melbourne in australia i drove buses for greyhound there so i have some bus experience as well all right so the driving examiner's job is to assess your ability and ensure that you have due care and control of the vehicle in changing traffic conditions as well. They're also testing when they're doing slow speed maneuvers if you have mastery of the primary controls of the vehicle and you know where the vehicle is in space and place. So this is what the driving examiners are looking for uh, when they're taking you out on the road test. Okay, and your job in the vehicle is to take away the driving examiner's right to fail you. Nothing more, nothing less. That's all you have to do. You simply have to pass the test. Most of you, most of us who are taking a road test, the driver's test are not going to be perfect. You need to pass. After you get past the road test and you get your license, then you can work on perfection and driving because there is a lot of experience that goes into being able to drive well. And that's what you'll need to do. So think of first impressions. You're gonna have a very short time and it's gonna be a shorter amount of time now that uh, they're going to be, these testing centers are going to try and catch up with the backlog. So you need to think about first impressions. You come in in a clean vehicle, you've, you've taken a shower, you've got nice clothes on, uh, you know, you're shaved, you've brushed your hair. If you're a woman, you, put, you do your makeup and those types of things. Uh, so think about first impressions because you don't get a second chance to make a first impression. And if the car's clean, you know, the footwells in the car aren't, filled up with fast food wrappers and uh, it's not kind of smelly and stinky inside your car and everything works, uh, then you know that's gonna be a real leg up for you in terms of passing your road test. So I wanna uh, talk about some of the myths that a lot of people have about driving examiners and driving instructors are the worst for giving these to students. Don't wear sunglasses. This is the one of my pet peeves on what driving instructors say to students. They say that they can't wear sunglasses uh, because the driving examiner wants to see your eyes moving and look, seeing where you're looking. Well, that's, that's just rubbish. They can't see that sort of thing. And as well, if it's a sunny day out, uh, you need to wear sunglasses to be safe. Uh, me, personally, I need to wear sunglasses uh, when it's sunny out or I can't see well. So, you know, my eyes are really photosensitive. Uh, the next one, the next myth is don't engage in conversation. Uh, some driving examiners will engage you in conversation. They want to see if you can multitask and carry on a conversation plus drive well. Uh, if you don't want to talk and you want to focus on your driving and on the test, then just simply ask the driving examiner, you know, I just prefer not to talk. I prefer just to drive and do my thing. The driving examiner would be totally cool with that, okay? Uh, examiners work to fail you. That's not true either. They don't have a quota uh, in terms of how many uh, tests they have to fail and those types of things you know uh, you have a really good chance of passing if you've taken some form of driver education uh, driver training you're on the YouTube channel here and you're watching my videos and doing the techniques and skills that are presented there you're gonna be you're gonna do just fine in your test because 95% of people who take some form of driver training are successful on passing their road test on the first try if you don't take some form of driver training or you miss something, then there's a chance that you might fail, but for the most part, you're gonna be successful, okay? And I have to speak perfectly English. No, you don't have to speak English perfectly to, to do a road test and pass your road test, okay? They simply wanna know 
that you can show that you have due care and control of the vehicle in changing traffic conditions and you don't hit anything or don't endanger anybody on the roadway and you're going to be successful in passing your road test. All right. So the vehicle, make sure that you do a pre-trip inspection on your vehicle before you show up for the road test. I can't stress this enough. I've had lots of people who have come to me and said, oh, we couldn't take the road test because we had a brake light out. If you discover the night before on your vehicle that you have a brake light out, it only takes 10 minutes, 15 minutes to, to repair that. Or you can take it down to an auto mechanic or a shop and they'll fix that for you and you'll be able to go in and do your road test. So make sure you do a pre-trip inspection as well. There's a video here on the channel that you can look at uh, for that as well. Road signs, okay? One of the road signs I will tell you right now, if you speed in a school zone while school is in session, you will be unsuccessful on your road test. You won't pass, so know that. You need to adjust speed accordingly while you're driving on your road test. Lane end signs, stop signs, you need to stop at the correct stopping position at stop sign intersections. There's three different stopping positions. Uh, school zone signs and road markings, you need to pay attention to this because this is the language of roadways. And if you fail to adjust for signs consistently, the examiner is going to know that you are not paying attention to those signs. Slow speed maneuvers. Seven eighths of the road test is in a forward motion. It's the one eighth of the road test that gives most students the biggest challenge. Uh, slow three, and the slow speed maneuvers are three point turns, parallel parking, and backing into a parking space. Those are at minimum what you need to do for regardless of where you are in the world and where you're taking a road test. Okay. So you're gonna to need to be able to do slow speed maneuvers. Lane positioning, where, which, where do you need to be in the lane to execute the maneuver? Where do you need to be to make a right turn, a left turn? You need to know that when you make a left turn, as soon as you make the left turn, you need to move back over to the right lane on a complex intersection or multi-lane roadway. Uh, if you don't do that consistently, you're not going to be successful on your road test. The only time you stay in the left lane is if the examiner tells you that you're gonna turn left again in the next couple of blocks. Otherwise, move right over to the left lane or move from the left lane over back over to the right lane. As well, when you're turning left, make sure you turn into the left lane and when you're turning right, turn into the right lane. Don't drift across lanes without signaling or looking or observing. All right, merging lanes and changing lanes, you have to be able to do that. Anytime that you move the vehicle sideways, you need to communicate effectively and you need to indicate that to other road users via your signals. Uh, ass assess competency that's what the driving examiner is going to, to do and there's two ways that you can fail your test potentially you can demerit out because you're going to get assigned points for everything you do wrong uh, if you have too many demerits at the end of the test you won't be successful uh, that's pr probably not the way you're going to fail your test most students simply fail their test because they do something dangerous or they consistently do something wrong for the entire test for example they stop at the wrong place at stop sign intersections, the whole test for it. So they have the misinformation that they, the stop signs where they're supposed to stop and they stop at the stop sign consistently and they're in the wrong place when they're stopping. So doing something consi consistently wrong for the duration of the test is going to cause you to fail your test. So at the end, they're gonna give you feedback. They're gonna debrief your road test, what you did wrong. And they're usually only going to focus on one or two things. If you're unsuccessful on your road test, they can't go over every possible error that you made for the purposes of your road test. They're only going to focus on one or two things. And those are usually, you know, the tip of the iceberg in terms of things that you need to correct. So the other way that you can uh, ensure that you're going to pass first time, and I suggest this to, to students all the time, if you don't take some form of driver education, then book a practice driving test with a local driving school before you go in for your road test. That way, the driving instructor can give you some feedback of skills and abilities that may need to be strengthened before you actually show up for your road test. And it's money well spent, and I really encourage you to do that. So good luck on your road test, and remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. All right, and we'll get back over here. Here's my friend Janet is here. How are you, Janet? Anderson, I was sleeping and driving three days ago on the morning. It was scary. <laughs> okay, hopefully you weren't sleeping while you were driving, Anderson. Uh, but uh, so you were driving in the morning. Uh, I got chased down by a road rage guy at 105 miles an hour. He was trying to hit get me off the road. Yeah, that's that's good. That's probably pretty scary, Anderson. I'm very sure that's scary. Any road rage incident is going to be upsetting. So yeah, try not to deal with those. 
Anderson, I'm getting a dash cam on my car. Yeah, no, we talked about this last week as well. Somebody asked me about a, a dash cam in their vehicle. Uh, dash cams can be good and they can be bad because sometimes they can put the blame on you, not just the other person as well. So know that for the purposes of having a dash cam in your car that they can work against you as well as work for you. Uh, you know, uh, just know that for the purposes of that. So again, uh, we we put a video out last week. Again, we'll just reiterate this, say this again here about figuring out what's going with different test centers in different places in North America, in Canada and the United States and around the world for that matter, uh, and trying to figure out what DMVs are doing. Many DMVs have yet to reopen. Uh, here in British Columbia, for example, the uh, ICBC has not reopened at this point. I'm not sure what they're going to do when they do reopen uh, because the backlog is getting insurmountable. I mean, and what I mean by ins insurmountable is, is I just don't know how they're going to get through this, this backlog of driver's tests uh, that have been put on hold. Uh, for example, here in the province of British Columbia, they do 7,500 road tests a week and they've now been closed for the better part of 12 weeks. We're going on 13 weeks here that the, the ICBC has been closed. So we're talking of tens of thousands. Now, let's you know just put that in perspective in terms of California. California has six times the population of British Columbia. Almost 40, 40 million people live in the state of California. And think of how many road tests a week they do. They are hundreds of thousands of road tests behind. I don't know how that they think that they're going to catch up with all of those road tests. So they're going to have to put in place some sort of measure that's going to allow people to do that. And I did propose a measure in that video uh, for them. So uh, here, let's just see if I can get this video up for you here. Uh, Bear with me here in just a sec. All right. Uh, Anderson, I shouldn't be driving while I am tired, but I had an early doctor's appointment and you had to wake up at 3.30. How, holy cow, how early was your, your doctor's appointment, Anderson, that you had to wake up at 3.30? That's that's really early. Uh, Katie, what if I have a backup camera that I can't turn off on a new vehicle and I go to take the road test? How can I be successful on the road test? Okay. So Katie, that's, that's an excellent question about a road test because as Katie indicated, you're not allowed to use a backup camera for the purposes of a road test, all right? And uh, the only place that I know of that is allowed, you're allowed to use a backup camera is the state of New Jersey. Now, Katie, it, it, just because they say you can't use the backup camera doesn't mean that you can't use it. You can use it as another aid. So. You're still looking out the back window, but you can glance at it and have a look and make sure that there isn't anybody behind you or anything in the path of travel for when you're backing up. Uh, for example, Katie, today I was doing a video on parallel parking a larger vehicle and I borrowed my mate's uh, Dodge Ram 2500. It's a three quarter ton pickup truck. And there's a toolbox across the, in, the, in, the, in the bed of the pickup right at the back window. So it's, Looking out the back window of that pickup truck, you can't see anything. You have to look at the backup camera to see if there's anything directly behind you. So uh, I had to, you know, I still looked out the back window while I was backing up, but I would look at the backup camera to make sure that there wasn't anybody there. And I would also check my mirrors as well. So in terms of observing, yes, you can't just use the backup camera. And this is what the authorities are trying to get you to understand is, is that it's they don't want you to solely use the backup camera. You can use the backup camera, but you want to be using that, using your mirrors, and making sure that you're looking out the back window as well. So that's how you want to be doing that uh, in terms of your road test. Okay, uh, Eric, uh, on roundabouts or just 90 degree back, uh, backing up into spaces. Minnesota's very slow opening up just to get car tabs in Minnesota's taking over 90 days. Yes, so they're being very slow and I can understand what's happening uh, there in the state of Minnesota, Eric, as well. I'm sure they're, the authorities are bogged down with other priorities right now with what's going on there. Uh, yeah, so as far as I know, they're still testing. They're still going out for a road test. I haven't heard anything about changing the way that the road test is administered other than shortening it. So I suspect they're still going to be going out on roundabouts and those types of things, Eric. Okay, uh, Kyle, are you allowed to ask a question while driving? Uh, Kyle, that's kind of a very gray area in terms of asking examiners questions. 
Uh, it depends whether the question has something directly related to what's going on in the driving environment. And the reason for that is because you should be familiar with the environment, the driving environment and the roads in and around the test center. When you're doing your test and you, or when you're doing your preparation to take the test, you should be driving on the roads around the intersect around the, the test center. So if there's an odd kind of intersection or those types of things, you should already have done that intersection and know what you need to do. Uh, you know, whether you ask a driving instructor if you go to a school or those types of things, uh, you know, because I've done I've done tests like that before, uh, where I had to pretend I was the instructor, and you know I had the driving examiner. In, in my case, it was the driving school inspector because we have driving school inspectors here in the province of British Columbia. And asking a question, it's it's very weird <laughs> about whether they'll let you ask a question or not. I I think if the question is just about clarification of of a point, then yes, they'll let you ask a question. But if you said, for example, uh, you know, you're sitting at the intersection. Oh, is it clear for me to go now? Uh, the private, the, the driving examiner is probably not going to let you ask that kind of question. It's, and, you know, that's a very tough question. Uh, you know, you can ask it and they may or may not give you an answer. That's all you need to do. And it's also, it's going to depend on which driving examiner you're asking the question to as well. Okay. Gil. Hola, amigo. Uh, yes. Hello, my friend. Anderson. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I got a speeding ticket. Oh, that's not good, Anderson, that you got a speeding ticket. Uh, on a test, it depends on the examiner. Uh, no, it, it doesn't really depend on the examiner, Anderson. In terms of your speed, you should be adjusting your speed every 8 to 10 minutes. Or 8 to 10 minutes, yeah. <laughs> test will be over by then. Every 8 to 15 seconds. And the reason you should be adjusting your speed every 8 to 10 seconds is because checking the instrument panel is part of your scanning pattern. So when you're driving forward down the roadway, you should be looking far down the road in checking your instrument panel far down the road, both shoulders of the road in, check your center mirror down, check one wing mirror, look down again, the other wing mirror, and then checking your instrument panel. So your chain, your, your scanning pattern is checking your instrument panel. And if you're not adjusting your speed every 15 or 20 seconds, the, that ties into your observation and the examiner knows that you not, are not observing the way that you should be and your scanning pattern is not in place because you shouldn't be five miles an hour over the road over the speed the posted speed limit for the purposes of a road test you should be very close to what that is if you do get going five miles an hour over you should be adjusting that within 10 seconds you should be slowing down and going oh I'm going a little bit fast or you're going downhill you should be on the brake a little bit and adjusting that speed. So that's what should be going on there. Uh, and okay, backing up into a space, very slow opening up. Yes, and most of the DMVs are slow in terms of backing up. Uh, okay, so Katie, I answered your question there about uh, the, the, the backup camera. You can use the backup camera, you're just not using it as the only thing that is gonna help you to back up. Mohammed, uh, do you know anything about Maryland DMV uh, reopen plans? I don't know anything about Maryland and maybe one of the other smart drivers might know something about what's going on with the DMV there in Maryland as well, Mohammed. And uh, what I'm going to do this week here uh, is I'm going to start collating this information and I'm going to put it over on the uh, smart drive test website. I'll put it right. I'll put a link right on the front page of the smart drive test website about what's going on with different DMV centers what they're what stage of opening they're in i'll try and scan the uh the internet here and if anybody else any smart drivers here watching the channel uh can send me the information uh rick at smartdrivetest.com and uh that'll definitely help me out and i'll get that collated for you and get that information readily available so we can start putting that to get you know everybody helping everybody out so uh your doctor's test was at 7 15 you live two hours away and it's a two hour drive. Okay, so now I understand I understand why you're up so early to go for a doctor's appointment. I can definitely understand that uh, in terms of, yeah, especially if you're going for a, um, you know, if you're going to see a specialist or whatnot. Jasmine, how are you, my friend? <laughs> Speed drive test. There we go. And you're all kinds of happy. Excellent. Avery, uh, for stop signs and stoplights, do I have to stop before the line so I can't see the line? 
Yes, excellent question, Avery. When you come up to stop at a stop line, the big fat line that's painted on the roadway, you want to come up, you're slowing down, and just as the line disappears under the front of the vehicle, that's when you stop. Uh, excuse me here, just a moment. Okay. So Avery, just as it rolls under the front of the car, then you come to a stop and you, you'll notice uh, that you'll be about two feet, two, three feet behind the line, which is where you need to stop for the purposes of your road test. So that's how you do that. Anderson, Minnesota has the worst drivers in the world. They never stop at stop signs and they never stay in their lane. Uh, Anderson, that is not, uh, that is not a, um, what am I trying to say? Uh, that's not just Minnesota. <laughs> that happens everywhere in North America. Nobody stops at stop signs in North America and, and people wander over their lane all the time. I have reels of footage from my dash cam where I'm following other drivers and they're, they're weaving in and out of the lane, going down the road and those types of things. Uh, as well, you follow truck drivers, it's the same. Uh, you know, they don't have good lane positioning and those types of things. So uh, yeah, that's not exclusive to Minnesota. There's lots of drivers that do that and it's part of social driving. Uh, and I've talked about this before in terms of social driving. Uh, some of the hallmarks of social driving is, is that people follow too close. Uh, they stop too close to other vehicles in traffic. Uh, they don't stop at stop signs. They, they roll through the intersection. Uh, they wander in their lane. Uh, and they keep up with traffic flow. Those are all hallmarks of social driving. And, and this is the way after people get their license, that's just the way that people drive. It's part of the culture, excuse me, of, of the culture of driving. Uh, John, my friend, can you help me to get an English textbook for heavy uh, motorbike, uh, power bike for a theory test in Sweden because no English textbooks? Oh, okay. Uh, so... Maybe, John, can you clarify that what you mean by heavy motorbike? Uh, because I do have the ones, like most of those textbooks, I don't know whether you actually want the physical textbook because there's lots of PDF versions on the internet. Like you can get an electronic copy of a handbook for motorcycles. And I mean, most of the information is going to be reliable for you there in Sweden as well. Like it's going to work for you. But um uh, you don't have any English textbooks there. So yeah, um, you just go on the internet and search for uh, motorcycle manual. Uh, I know that BC's is online and I could send you the link for that. But if there's something else you need, then we can help you with that as well. Uh, Anderson, especially on Tuesday, was about to be passed by a bike rider on the freeway. He was J riding and I had to go on the shoulder to drive because uh, he was in... He, Anderson, you were having some interesting driving sessions. <laughs> Maybe you stay away from other traffic. Uh, Avery, if the speed sign is not present for a bit of time, can I ask the tester what the speed limit is? Avery, no you can't. Not when it comes to speed limit. The speed limit, unless otherwise posted in town, is 30 miles an hour, unless otherwise posted. So if you don't see a speed sign for a while and you're in town, do 30 miles an hour. If you're on a highway or outside of town, it's 50 miles an hour unless otherwise posted. And for those of us in Canada, it's 50 kilometers an hour in town unless otherwise posted. And outside of town, it's 100 km, It's uh, 80 kilometers an hour unless otherwise posted. So Avery, that is the very question that you can't ask the examiner because that's information that you should already know. All right. Uh, Jonathan Reed, uh, I still have my permit. I don't know when I'm going to enroll in driver training class, but I keep you posted. Excellent. Congratulations, Jonathan. And uh, where are you in the world? Just check to make sure uh, that your DMV is doing whatever it's supposed to be doing. I don't know. We've got just a dog's breakfast of opening, just doing certain classes of licenses, not opening or whatnot. So, you know, we're trying to sort all of this out for people. And like I said, I'm going to collate this information. I'm going to put it up over on the Smart Drive Test website and I'll put a link to that over there as well. Uh, Yes, Anderson, yes, exactly what Anderson just said is what I said as well. In the United States there, 30 miles an hour in town unless otherwise posted, 50 miles an hour outside of the city unless otherwise posted. So know that. Sandra, congratulations on passing your road test. That is awesome news. Awesome. Yay, Sandra. That's great. Uh, and where did you pass your road test, Sandra? Awesome. Uh Anderson, uh, that's not right in terms of 55 or 35. It's 50 and 30. 
okay unless otherwise posted and as well make sure that you keep track of speed signs in school zones as well and make sure you do the speed limit when school is in session and uh, school is in session here in British Columbia however it's not in session in the province of Ontario and there's a lot of states that I'm sure that school is not in session either so if school is not in session you don't have to adjust your speed to the school sign speed so know that for the purposes of your road test and this is something else that you're going to need to do uh, is know where um, know where the school zones are in relation to the DMV and those types of things so Sandra passed a road test in Michigan on Wednesday and so I'm taking it Sandra that the DMVs there in the state of Michigan are in fact open and that they are doing testing now Sandra did they do any screening for COVID-19 did they ask you a series of questions or make you disinfect the passenger seat in the car or wear a mask or anything like that did they do make you do any of that for the purposes of taking your test uh, Eric some cars post speed limit in the dash area yes they do Eric uh, some of the newer high-end cars uh, and your navigation and sat nav will also post the speed limit on them and I was watching a video in the UK and maybe some of our UK smart drivers will be able to verify this for me the other day with a driving examiner that was doing a mock road test with a student and they have the sat nav plugged in that the student for the purposes of the road test at least this was my understanding this wasn't said explicitly but it was my understanding that the student driving the car for the purposes of the road test was supposed to be listening to the sat nav and following the directions of the sat nav for the purposes of doing the road test uh, so maybe uh, this is something that's coming in the future I hadn't heard about this up to this point that they were using GPS or sat nav uh, in the vehicle uh, I find that a little bit it, it concerns me a little bit because what happened at the end of the road test when the driving exam uh, driving instructor was giving feedback to the student was is that the student was listening to the navigation system rather than looking out the front window and looking at the road signs and was failing to read some of the important road signs as they were doing their driving test and this is the feedback that the driving instructor gave to the student and I was like yeah I have, I have a little problem with that uh, when you're teaching new drivers to be following the sat nav rather than looking out the window and figuring out where they're going and looking at road signs and those types of things so yeah that was interesting uh, Sandra I had to wear my mask uh, no screening but everything was disinfected before and after yeah okay so excellent so they're doing that kind of uh, what I said there in the video I did on Wednesday uh, is, is that that's what they're doing okay um, okay just bear with me one sec so I don't know whether it'll let me do this but we'll try here just typing this in here 18 okay so there's the link I just put the link up for you for the video that I put up on Wednesday about the different possibilities of what your road test may look like and I also put up what I thought that one of was one of the things they might be able to do in terms of you know getting through the backlog and those types of things but what Sander was saying there and that's valuable information that they did have to disinfect the vehicle and she had to wear her mask for the purposes of the road test uh, and uh, <laughs> I made that comment and one of the comments on the video was is that there was a crash in the states that was reported by the New York Times and Fox News that a driver was wearing his or her N95 face mask and the police put forward the supposition that maybe she or was the driver was breathing in too much carbon monoxide because of the N95 face mask uh, that's probably untrue it's probably not true the, the driver probably had other health related problems that led to passing out behind the wheel of the vehicle and causing a crash so yeah because you know I've worn masks because I've had to go into the chiropractor and you know the um, massage therapist for my back and you know they don't restrict breathing uh, you know there is a little bit in terms of the N95 mask because they're medical masks but for the most part they're not going to restrict your breathing so know that for the purposes of your test okay uh, Anders I passed a cop a couple of days, days ago and thought he was going to pull me over I guess uh, I was going at a safe speed why he didn't uh, not all police officers are going to pull you over there's a lot of reasons why they're not going to pull you over Anderson uh, they're off shift uh, you're not speeding uh, and those types of things uh, my mom did say to me this morning uh, when she flew back to Ontario she she got back today 
that she got pulled over by a police officer in the province of Ontario and they were asking her questions about where she was and why she was out. So I guess in the east, uh, there's a lot of places that are still closed down a lot uh, because of COVID-19. Um, yes, Anderson, that's good tips about getting blind spot mirrors for your car. Uh, they're not blind spot mirrors, they're just convex mirrors and they will give you better visibility and you'll be able to see better uh, around the vehicle and whatnot. Uh, John, thanks. Uh, you used the right word, BC textbook. I will appreciate it if you were able to send me the PDF file. Okay, John, I can definitely have a look up for that. Uh, John, send me an email, rick at smartdrivetest.com and I will send uh, that manual to you and you can have a look at it as well. Uh, if you just type in drivers, um, the state that you want to look at, I would probably suggest that you the California or New York state in the US and just type in uh, motorcycle manual, riding manual, and that will come up on Google. Uh, you don't even have to send me an email. Just Google that and it will come up for you, okay? You shouldn't have too much trouble finding that. All right. Uh, yes, the conduct mirrors very much come in handy. And this is the other thing. Uh, like I said, I was doing a video today on how to parallel park a pickup truck, a very big pickup truck. And they have convex mirrors on them. They're just part of, you know, they come with the truck. And most larger vehicles that you're going to be driving are going to have convex mirrors on them. And you can use those to do your slow speed maneuvers. If you can use the mirrors, then that's really going to help you out. And it really did help me out in terms of being able to parallel park this behemoth truck. Because uh, <laughs> it's not something you probably want to use on a road test because there's just too many blind areas around the vehicle as well. as You know, the, blind, the, the, the truck is enormous. It's, you know, it's a four-door... Uh, Ram 2500 pickup truck. So if you can get yourself a mid-sized car, that's going to make the test a little bit easier for you as well. There's going to be better visibility in and around the vehicle. So know that for the purposes of your test and whatnot. Ah, spilled my water on my keyboard, which is not good. Try not to do that. So uh, yeah, and if so, again. I ask if uh, all the smart drivers, if you're just tuning in or you're watching on the replay here, uh, please leave us a note down in the comment about what's going on in your state or province in terms of road testing, whether the test center has opened up yet, uh, whether they're just doing certain classes of license and, uh, you know, and whether they are open. I know in the state of Texas as well, you can also go to uh, some of the private driving schools and they can administer the test there. They have the authority to be able to do that as well. So the state of Texas is still doing road tests. As uh, Sandra said there in the state of Michigan, you have to wear a mask and you have to disinfect things and they are doing road tests there. So that can really help out and whatnot. Uh, you know, and, but you know, a lot is, a lot of places aren't open yet. They still aren't open and we're, there's no indication of when they are going to open. For example, here in British Columbia, we have no idea when ICBC is going to be opening. Iman, I failed twice for mistakes such as reverse parking and parallel parking. How can I improve for these? Uh, these, Iman, uh, excellent question. So essentially what you're having trouble with is you're having trouble with the slow speed maneuvers. Have a look at the video here on my channel for uh, how to drive a car for beginners. And there are some slow speed maneuvers and exercises that you can do in the parking lot uh, and that will give you a better awareness of where your vehicle is in space and place and give you mastery of the primary controls, the steering wheel, the brake, and the throttle, and that will really help you out. So if that's the feedback that you got for uh, reverse stall parking and parallel parking, then those are the things that you need to focus on. And the other thing I'm on, yeah, I know it's not sexy, okay? These are, you know, doing these slow speed maneuvers, you know, they're boring, okay? And it takes a lot of concentration. But when you get those down, your overall driving will improve. So know that for the purposes of learning how to drive and driving better, that slow speed maneuvers will make you a better driver overall. That's why you want to spend some time on those. Uh, Mohammed, uh, my learner's permit expired. I'm still going to be able to take my road test. Yes, Mohammed, uh, if your license expired during the time that the test centers have been closed down because of COVID-19, they will extend your permit. Now, make sure that, Mohammed as well, that you have a look online at your test center, wherever you are in the world, and look that up online and make sure that, uh, you know, they don't have a form online that you have to fill out and those types of things because some of this stuff, extending your learner's permit can be done online uh, for an extension. And if it can't be done as an extension, they're probably the test or uh, the 
state or province that you're in will have an extension for that so that you can come in and get a road test at, at the time that you need to get a road test. So know that uh, for those of you who are waiting for a road test in the states, that they're gonna work through the backlog first. They're gonna take care of those states and provinces. Uh, they're gonna take care of those that have their license that is expiring. They're gonna try and get you through first, uh, okay, for the purposes of your road test. Uh, my friend Janet, I don't think anything in Ontario has opened yet. Just recently, a few service Ontario spots for getting plate stickers. Okay, excellent. And uh, Janet, I was saying that my mom, she flew back on Saturday. So she left Saturday morning. She had to stay overnight in Toronto at a hotel because the flight to London was the next day. And she was saying that it's very different in Ontario like the, it's completely shut down in Ontario as opposed to here in Western Canada where I live in British Columbia. I mean, all of the stores and shops are open here. Uh, the test centers haven't opened up and a lot of the government agencies haven't opened up yet. But my mom was saying that in Ontario, it's shut down. It is still like completely shut down. Exactly what you're saying there that the MTO has not opened up at all. Uh, Anderson, taking your time, uh, relax and angling your car and breathe. Yes, breathing. That's an important point. Anderson, thank you for that. Um, uh, yes. And take your time. Make sure that you go. That's another excellent point that Anderson made there about going slow. And I tell students this for the purposes of doing slow speed maneuvers, go slow. There's several reasons why you must go slow. The first is if you're going slow, you have better time to observe around the vehicle, not just out the back of the, the back window when you're looking, but as well, um, <clears throat> if you hit something, it's going to do less damage. If you do see something that's in your path of travel, you have a better chance of being able to avoid it or get the vehicle stopped. And finally, uh, you have more time to maneuver the vehicle and move things around. So make sure that you go slow when you're doing these. And Corey's put the video up for you, the playlist there on how to drive a car for beginners. Thank you, Corey, for doing that. Uh, Corey's in Winnipeg. Uh, are they still locked down there in, Winni in Winnipeg, Corey, because of the COVID-19? Um, and DC's uh, just reiterating, uh, uh, saying again what uh, Janet was saying in terms of that Ontario has extended the lockdown until the 19th of June. And, you know, I don't know how long these places are going to be shut down. They're going to be shut down quite a bit until, you know, maybe until there's a vaccine for this. Because the governments cannot guarantee that government employees are going to be safe in the workplace and this is the issue right now that we're dealing with this and this is the reason why uh these continue to be shut down and locked down so uh yeah it's gonna it could be a while so janet's saying as well confirming the the extension date until the 19th of june there in the province of ontario anderson uh don't take forever that would be an obstruction of traffic yes so you what Anderson is saying is you got to find that happy medium be go between going slow and uh, being an obstruction to traffic. Because if you're an obstruction for to traffic and you know you're taking two or three minutes to do a parallel park, that's far too long. You should be able to pull up beside the other car and do your parallel park within a minute and have the vehicle into the space. Okay, uh, John and John, you were able to get the PDF from uh, New York State. Excellent, congratulations, John. If you have any questions about motorcycle testing or those types of things, John, or something doesn't make sense, just send me, uh, dr drop me a comment or send me a comment, uh, Rick at SmartDriveTest.com, and we'll definitely help you out with that. Um, so Corey says that in this in the province of Manitoba that they're opening up uh, in phases. Uh, so they're probably doing offering particular services and those types of things. Uh, Corey, you're not sure whether they're doing uh, road tests there or that sort of thing. Okay, uh, DC, yes, I believe next week they will announce their plan for phase two of the reopening. Okay, so that's what some of these test centers and other places are doing is they're beginning to open up in phases. Uh, the province of Saskatchewan has actually been open for a few weeks here in terms of doing road tests and whatnot. And I don't know whether I have any smart drivers out there in the province of Quebec, but I know that they've been open for a while. Uh, here in British Columbia, the, the kids have gone back to school. My two kids have gone back to school, but only part time. So what they've done is they, they've, they've split up the classrooms. So it's only about a third of the kids who are going into the classroom. And my kids are only going two to two days a week, uh, to school. So that's one of the ways that they're dealing with, uh, the public school system, uh, reopening, uh, as well. 
Arturo, uh, which brake manual province is better for all Canada to study? Um, <clears throat> Arturo, probably uh, air brake manual. You probably want to use the one from British Columbia here is probably the one you want to use. Uh, any one of them is going to be good for you. Uh, so ICBC here in, in, uh, in BC for air brakes or the province of Ontario, the MTO, that one's gonna work for you as well. So either one of those will work for you in terms of uh, studying for air brakes. And as well, Arturo, uh, head over to the Smart Drive Test website and just go to the search menu up at the top of the page there and just type in uh, checklist air brakes and it'll give you, there's a checklist you can use for your in-cab checks for the air brake as well and that'll help you out, okay? Um, Augustin, uh, do I have my permit for six months uh, in California to get my license or can't I get my license sooner? I really don't want to wait six months. Yeah, and uh, Augustine, I don't know what they're doing in the state of California. Uh, if we have any smart drivers out there that are from California, just please let, let us know down in the comments what's going on in terms of the state of California. And we'll put that information up for you as well and get you going and help you out. Uh, and essentially, we're I'm going to try and monitor this as best I can and if all the smart drivers out there whether you're watching now or you're watching on the replay uh, if you can just leave a comment down below as to what's going on in your state or province whether they're opening up in phases uh, whether they're doing just particular classes of licenses for example they're only doing CDLs or like they're doing in the state of Michigan where you have to wear a face mask and you have to disinfect the seat uh, for the examiner to sit in, uh, whether they're doing screening or those types of things. And this is really going to help a lot of people out. And so if we can help you out in any way, uh, do that. Drop a comment down below or send me an email, rick at smartdrivetest.com. And we'll be sure to do the best we can to get you the latest information for different people and whatnot for doing your test. <clears throat> so again, just reiterating uh, what the job of the examiner is and what your job is in terms of going in and doing your test at the local DMV or different testing authority here in Canada or whatnot. The driving examiner's job is to determine that you have due care and control of the vehicle in changing traffic conditions. And essentially there's four components of any road test for any class of license regardless of where you are in the world. Space management, speed management, observation and communication. And those are the four components that you have to be able to do. So space management, and I believe that not only is space management pinnacle for passing a road test, but it's also paramount for staying safe on the road after you start, after you get your license and you begin to drive. Because if you're not near other road users, you're not near other traffic, uh, it's less likely that you're gonna be involved in a crash. So if you can resist that kind of herd mentality because if you're driving down a highway or on a freeway you're going to see that all the cars are clustered together in one cluster and if something goes wrong four or five cars are into the wreck not just one vehicle so space management and as well you want to try and drive in the in the spaces between the clusters on the roadway try and stay out of those clusters because that's where you're going to get into trouble so space management uh, and in terms of driving well and maintaining space between other vehicles uh, you know, stopping at the correct stopping position at stop sign intersections, stopping back so you can see the tires of the vehicle in front of you when you're stopped in traffic, uh, stopping at the correct position in preparation to make a left-hand turn at an intersection. And what I tell people, tell drivers to be safe uh, when you're making a left-hand turn is to stop with the front steer tires of your vehicle on the front crosswalk line. That way you're committed to the intersection, but you're not in the intersection. And then you're sitting there, you're waiting, for traffic to clear and when you see the gap that's when you enter into the intersection and when the gap presents itself then you turn and you're going to be in the intersection for less time that way because you have a little bit of speed going forward before you execute the left hand turn so that's all space management don't block an intersection don't be in an intersection you can't clear because if that happens on a road test that's an automatic fail all right so that's uh, space management speed management you have to manage speed of your vehicle to be able to manage space around your vehicle and you have to be adjusting your speed all of the time as traffic conditions change for the purposes of a road test you need to be adjusting your speed every 8 to 15 seconds in keeping with your scanning pattern uh, while you're driving so speed management and for the purposes of a road test the posted speed limit or the flow of traffic whichever is less so if the flow of traffic is less than what the posted speed limit is then you're going to go what the traffic flow is going so know that for the purposes of a driver's test or any other time that you're driving all right communication you need to communicate effectively with other traffic and road users you need to use your signals uh, your lights 
your horn, uh, eye contact, and uh, you sometimes hand gestures. You're going to have to indicate to pedestrians that it's okay for them to go. You're not going to move forward and block their path. And as well, when you're using hand gestures, make sure you use all five fingers. Don't use number one. Don't tell them they're number one. You won't be successful on a road test. All right. Uh, and then finally, the most important way that you communicate with other road users is the position of your vehicle on the roadway. That is the most important uh, form of communication because if you're in the left turning lane, there's a good chance that you're going to turn left. Or if you're up behind another vehicle and they're in the left turning lane, there's a good chance that they're going to turn left. It's not likely they're going to turn right. All right. And then finally, uh, observation. You need to observe correctly for the purposes of your road test. And not only for your road test, but to stay safe after you get your license and drive smarter is to observe correctly. So you need to have a scanning pattern in place where you're looking far down the road, you're checking in, checking your instrument panel, down the road, checking your wing mirrors, in, down the road, checking your center mirror. So if you can have the scanning pattern in place, it's going to keep you safe. Uh, as well, anytime that you turn or you move the vehicle sideways, you're going to shoulder check and you're going to shoulder check twice before you move the vehicle. It's kind of like, you know, measure, measure twice, cut once and kind of, kind of carpentry thing. It's the same thing with driving a vehicle. Make sure that you look twice and then move the vehicle. Same with shoulder checking. Okay. So anytime you make lane changes, you're going to shoulder check, mirror signal shoulder check. There's nobody there. The gap is present. You're going to shoulder check again and you're going to move across into the other lane and leave your signal on the entire time you're moving across into the other lane. That's going to keep you safe, not only on a road test, but also later when you're driving defensively and you're trying to stay safe on the roadway with your license. Okay. Uh, anytime you're backing or parking, 360 degree scan around the vehicle and you're going to look out the back window of the vehicle while you're backing up. What Katie was saying earlier is, is that she can't turn her backup camera off. You don't want to turn your backup camera off, but you do want to use it. You know, just have a glance at it before you start moving the vehicle backwards. You can't use just your backup camera, but you still need to be looking out the back window. Okay. So shoulder checking, looking out the back window when you're backing up. And again, when you're backing up for every vehicle length that you're backing up, you still want to be, you know, stop, do a 360 degree scan and then continue on and looking out the back window uh, for your, to pass your driver's test and whatnot. Okay. So I think that my thing is just bear with me here. Cause I'm going to just restart my screen here because I think it's, you can't come on bear. All right. So I restarted here. just want to make sure that everything is working. So it seems to be working. I think I'm back. I got the, you got to protect your privacy here on YouTube. So everybody's good. And again, if you're uh, here on the live stream or you're watching on the replay, uh, just leave us a comment down in the comment section or send me an email, rick at smart drive test, and we'll help you out. And uh, we'll put that information here in the comments or we'll put, and as well as I said, I'm going to collate this information and put it up over at the smart drive test website for you as well. And Corey says, last I saw online, the tests were indefinitely on hold. Yeah, and that's, it seems to me uh, what Corey just said, that the bulk of places, the most of the United States and most of the provinces here in Canada are still indefinitely on hold. Very few places are open. Uh, Michigan is one of the exceptions. Uh, Texas has uh, licensed testing at the private schools, uh, which they're allowed to do in the state of New York. They're doing CDL tests. Uh, this is the state of or the province of Saskatchewan is open, but that's the only province that I know that is open as of now. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Toxic, man, you the best driving instructor on the whole of YouTube because you are so knowledgeable and you have a safe mindset. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Toxic. That is a, just an incredible compliment. Uh, you know, we're definitely trying to help you out for sure. Uh, <laughs> I always knew Mr. Toxic, there was one thing that kind of set me aside was is that, you know, I'm a commercial driving instructor, so I can talk to all of that as well as opposed to just the people who are teaching you how to drive a car. So I have a little bit more knowledge in kind of all of that end, but we're really, I mean, right now we're just really trying to help people out and try and figure out what the driving centers are doing and offering options for them as well so that we can get this thing rolling again, get this thing going. So, uh, you know, and I, I, you know, I, I think the public sentiment is, is that we would like to kind of reopen the economy. We would like to get things going again. We would like to help people out because, you know, this was what I was saying to somebody the other day about road tests is that we need that, you know, this is this is very important. It's it's pivotal 
to the economy because young people and new drivers have to be able to drive to get to work, to take their kids to school, to, to go to school themselves. You know, we need to be able to drive. We need to be able to get around and transportation is vital to the economy. So I don't know, you know, I kind of, it's concerning. It's beginning to concern me a little bit now about how long these driving test centers have been closed and how long they have not been administering road tests. And, you know, I was probably a little bit arrogant when, when this whole thing kind of started uh, about, you know, the test centers will never close down. And in, in fact, they did close down and now they've been closed down for months and it's it's just it's becoming to a point where in my personal opinion i think it's going to it's getting to a critical point here because we you know we, we just have so many people who are waiting to do road tests and do other things that we just need to get these things going here okay uh 380 my friend hello finally able to stop by that's great <laughs> always good for you to stop by uh, now just remind me 380 you're you're in the maritime sir. Am I correct? What's Do you know what's going on there in terms of the test centers opening and those types of things? Uh, Epic, regarding the state of New Jersey, the ones with backlogs are going to take the test first, then the others on or after the 29th of June. Uh, excellent ticks, Rick. What do you think of Illinois using a chase car test? Uh, yeah, that was another thing that I did propose, Epic, in the video that I put up there on COVID-19 and the road test was I did put that forth that they could use a chase car. Now, that could potentially work epic in terms of having a chase car and administering the road test that way. Uh, it does put a bit of onus on the new drivers coming in that they need to bring somebody with them. I mean, in most cases, it's not going to be a big deal because your mom or da your dad will take the day off. And it will work if they have other personnel who are doing the screening. So if they just left the driver and the test and the tester in the chase vehicle and they just... And, and they have two or three other people, other employees who can take care of the administration part of the road test and doing all of that sort of thing, then I think it might be okay. Uh, it, that, that could potentially work with the chase guard. I see that as working, but they would need other people involved so that the examiner would just step out of the car, give them the pass, t pass or fail sheet, and they, give it to, they hand it off to the administration person, and the administration person takes you inside and does that and gives you, administers your license and those types of things. That could potentially work. And, it, and it, is that what, you're, what they're doing in, in the state of Illinois? Is that what you're doing? 380, uh, ping pong between Ontario and Pennsylvania stuck south at the moment, uh, though I could settle for the meal, Maritimes. <laughs> okay, excellent. Awesome. Uh, uh, so Eric is saying that the chase car tests, uh, would be good in Minnesota as well. And for those of you who don't know what a chase car is, is it's the same way that they administer motorcycle tests at test centers. So essentially what they do is the examiner and the driver are in a vehicle and they follow you around and they communicate left, right turns, uh, whatever maneuvers they want you to do via a walkie talkie, uh, or via radio. And you are in your car. You have a mentor with you that's going to go with you and they follow you around. It's, it's exactly what they do with motorcycle tests. They just follow you around with another car and they communicate with you via radio. And this is another way that they could do it. And I could potentially see them being able to speed this up a little bit, depending on if they, you know, just had a couple of one examiner who was doing, say, road tests for two or three hours. And then another examiner got in and he or she did the test for two or three hours, you know, potentially they might it might be possible for them to do five or six road tests an hour if they could do that that way if it was set up properly yeah so that might be a viable alternative for getting through the backlog of road tests that are available yeah it, it potential and i mean the other thing that they could do is that they could they could split it up so they have one examiner who's doing the slow speed uh, components and you know, and of the test in and around the test center, you come in, they go to the closed circuit area, they do the slow speed maneuvers, and then you go out in the, with the chase car. You know, if they coordinated all of this in a fashion, they might be able to do this. And I, I'm gonna think about that a little bit, and I might do another video about the, the possibility of, of being able to get through the backlog with chase vehicles and examiners in the parking lot. Uh, however, here in New Jersey, uh, decided to do it in the normal way. That might create issues with about social distancing. It looks like Minnesota and Illinois have the right approach using a chase car. Yes. Uh, blessing. Uh, hello from Atlanta. How are you? Blessing. Awesome. Great. Okay. 
So we're near the top of the hour here. So if you're watching here or you're watching on the replay, again, leave us a comment down in the comment section there about what is happening in your state or province or wherever you are in the world. If you're in Australia or you're in Europe, uh, drop us a note. Let us know what's going on, how they're getting through the tests, whether the, the test centers are still closed or whether they're only doing they're phasing in what they're doing in terms of those types of things and whatnot. And again, we'll get all of this information collated and get it out to you in terms of what's going on here and what's going on in terms of reopening and those types of things. But as we said, most states are still closed. They haven't reopened the DMVs in the province of Ontario. Uh, the MTO is still closed and they've actually extended the closure until the 19th of June. Here in British Columbia, ICBC is still closed. So know all of that and uh, we'll do what we can to get the information out to you and help you out. And uh, yeah, and if you have any requests for information that you want or you want me to do on live streams, topics you want me to talk about, I'll do all of that as well. So uh, thanks very much for this. And uh, Blessing says, I love watching all your videos. It helps me uh, when it comes to driving. Excellent, and so glad we can help out Blessing. Uh, and if you have any questions at all, drop me a comment, drop me a note, and we'll be a, uh, more than happy to help you out. So stay safe and remember, pick the best answer. Not necessarily the right Annie. answer. Annie. You want to say hi? Yes. Okay. I'm going to say hi. Hi. I'm burning for the people who are new. <laughs> and what have you been doing all day? I've been helping Dad with his YouTube video, and I've, I've been also going to the park a lot. And I watched a movie called Empire Strikes Back Star Wars, Episode V. Thanks, 380. Okay, so Pennsylvania opened last week in limited function. Okay, so, so the state of Pennsylvania is functioning in as well. Okay, perfect. So what was the video you were helping me with today? Um, how do you parallel park a truck? <laughs> yeah, big pickup truck. So that's what we're going to do this week. We're having that going. All right, excellent. So what can you say to the tagline? Uh, all right. Um, stay safe, learn a lot. I don't I do. Pick. Pick the best answer, not answer the right answer. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Bye, everybody. Have Thanks. a great week. Bye now.